physically. Let's look at the physical one. Here's a truth or a false question. It isn't the mountain head that wears you out, but the grain of sand in your shoe. True or false? That's true, isn't it? It's not the big stuff. We can take on the big stuff. It's all those little things that sort of add up over time and give us nuisances and bothersomes over time. So I want to give you a little, a little uh, test. You know, when, when we're stressed out, we, we produce the neuro, neuropeptide of cortisol, and that actually tightens up our body, and it tightens up our heads. Well, well let, 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 let me give you a little test. How many people, when, when, when you're stressed out, does cortisol go to your head? You get your headaches. How many people get headaches when they're stressed out? Hand, show of hands. So headaches, okay. How many people are neckers? I'm sure that's a personal question. <laughs> How many people get headaches and tension in their necks from cortisol and stress? Necks, shoulder area, shoulder area, chest, stomach upsakes, the There's a lot of different things to do. So one thing they found for sure was that when cortisol is in the body, the stress hormone of cortisol, it tightens up everything in, in your body. So this, this vibration it needs to be dealt with. It's like this, this kind of vibration. So I want to share with you a little test. Now I know you've had a fantastic couple of days. You learned a lot, a lot of amazing things, and I'm sure there's lots to share when you go home. You're looking forward to getting home. So you're probably feeling pretty good. But I have a little test that measures your optic nerve, the stress, the stress pressure on your optic nerve. It's a photograph of two dolphins and they're, they're jumping under the water and they're, they're, they're the same dolphin so they're, they're identical. But what, what happens when the, when the body's under stress is that the, the, the optic nerve gets kind of warped a little bit. So if you're, if you're stress free you see no, you'll see no changes between the dolphins. If you have just a little bit of stress you'll see maybe one or two changes. If you have mildly stressed you'll see two or three changes. If you have moderate maximum stress you'll see four or more changes. And if you see four, I'm not going to do show of hands, but if you see four or more, I'll write a, write a letter to your family so you can stay here for another week. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to do show of hands. I'll just check, see how you're doing. Check, check on the screen there for yourself. How you doing? <laughs> okay? I know you're probably feeling okay. It's been a good conference. You're probably okay. So don't worry about that. So stress impacts the body. You know, if it were so easy, folks, if we were all just glow worms, if we we're all just glorums, we could be in touch with the stress that impacts the body, that physical body that we have, that vibration of the body. We could be in touch with it if we were all glorums. We could sing our little glowworm song. I'd like to sing a little glowworm song for you now. I wish I was a glowworm, a glowworm's never glum, because how can you be grumpy when the sun shines out your bum? <laughs> we'll, we'll so check in with Diane on the Monday morning. We have a look at her backside. Diane, you had a good weekend, man. You're glowing. You're really glowing. You're taking care of yourself, Diane. Good for you. There's someone else you might meet, they're all burned out. Oh, baby, you better slow down. So the physical dimension of energy. I'd like you to pair up with somebody. I want to celebrate the physical body. I'm going to ask you, ask you to ask you a question. You're already paired up, obviously. So just pair up with somebody. I'm going to ask, you, ask them a question, the following question, and just listen to what they have to say. And then they'll, they'll have a turn to ask you the same question and listen to what they have to say. So just pair up with somebody if you'd be so kind. Find a partner that you can ask this question to. You got somebody there? Just a, just a couple of minutes, nothing big. Are you ready? You're talking about something, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, here's the question. Celebration of the human body, what's your favorite body part and why? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, on your body. On, on you, on you. Okay, what's your favorite body part on you? 30 seconds, go ahead and have a chat. Okay. You shared your body parts. I mean, you, you shared your appreciation of your body parts. Now, if we had time, we'd go around and hear some of them. I'm sure there's some fascinating body parts out there. There are 2,000 body parts, by the way. Remember, leave it 2,000 soap, washing 2,000 body parts. Or you can wash 2,000 body parts. So thank you for celebrating the body parts. I'd like to take the physical dimension of living well just a little bit further by sharing with you three things that I've found will help the vibration of whatever body part you just discussed. Okay, so what are those three things? They are as follows. Diet, exercise, and sleep. Now, I'm not an expert in diet. I know three things about diet. This is my font of wisdom for diet. Very simple. Every meal you should have should have five colors, and brown's not a color. <laughs> Red wine is good, especially from the Okanagan. And dark chocolate is magnificent. Thank you very much. That's all I know about diet. Sleep and exercise. Sleep. The great bard himself, Sir William Shakespeare, put it this way. Sleep that knits up the raveled sleep of care. Death of each day's life. Sore labor's bath. Balm of hurt minds. Great nature's second course. Chief nourisher in life's feast. 
We spend 26 years of our life, folks, that's a third of our life, of the average Canadian lifespan, a third of our life trying to get to sleep. Apparently we spend three months of our life well, looking for lost socks as well, but that doesn't count. <laughs> but it's 26 years of our life for looking, trying to get to sleep. So whatever you need to do to get your, the good rest, please do so. Now, there's a handout for you that's going to be downloadable on the Parkinson's BC website. Please take that handout. It's full of goodies. All the stuff I'm talking about are activities and goodies and practical stuff, including, in this case, the seven steps to wake up happy. Seven steps to wake up happy. Everything you need is in, the, in those seven steps to wake up. So please go to the Parkinson's website, download all the, all the stuff, look at all the, review all the, all the papers and all the other stuff. I want to share that with you for that. In fact, you know what, let, let's, just, let's, let's just push the chairs aside and have a little nap. <laughs> Why not? We'll be pre pre dinner now. <laughs> it takes a minute to sink this one in. Move it or lose it. Now, this one, I've shown this slide for many, many years. I love this slide. It just says it so beautifully. I had just do it for a while, but I got sued by a sneaker company, so they, they wouldn't let me do that one. Uh, so just, just uh, move it or lose it. And uh, this is actually becoming more alive, because like Bob was saying, I too have a stiffness in my elbow. I'm right side like Bob, and I, I've got an incredible pain in my elbow joint. If I don't go to physio, if I don't stretch my, my arm, I'm in trouble. If I don't move it, I lose it, and I'm starting to lose it on my right side. So move it or lose it, folks. It's very critical. So the next diet, exercise, and sleep. Now, I'm really quite lazy about exercise, so I want to share with you a thing that you can do in your chair to exercise and get the same benefits. It's called laughter. <laughs> it's called laughter. You can actually laugh and get the same benefits. Did you hear the story about Norm Cousins? Norm Cousins is a famous person in the 1960s. He was diagnosed with a, uh, an incurable uh, condition. He was basically told he's going to die. He said, well, I'm, he, said, he, told, he said to his friends and family, I'm not going to die in a hospital. I'm going to go to a hotel room and have a little bit of a party. And I'm going to have fun with my friends, and I'm going to actually um, get as many uh, Marx Brothers films that I can get, and I'm going to laugh myself to death, he said. So he started laughing, and he found out something really bizarre. He found out that after 10 minutes of authentic belly laugh, he could sleep pain-free. He was in excruciating pain. He could sleep pain-free for two hours. After 10 minutes of belly laugh, pain-free for two hours. That's phenomenal. The healing power of physical laughter. This is made famous by Dr. Uh, Patch Adams. You know about that. The physical act of laughter is really powerful because it does the same thing that exercise does. It creates endorphins in the body. The, the mind, the brain is a pharmacy. You know it's a pharmacy. We, we have a, we have a sus subscription shortage on dopamine right now, but the brain is a pharmacy. And you call up the brain to produce endorphins. So when you laugh, when you even fake laughing, you can actually fake laughing and tell the brain the same message to produce endorphins. Endorphins is the, the body's happy juice. The happy juice flushes out cortisol, the stress hormone. So when you laugh, you heard the expression, laugh till you leak? <laughs> That's cortisol saying, bye-bye, I'm out of here. <laughs> Enough of this of Norfin, I'm gone. So I want to share with you the power of laughter and just have some little bit of fun with you on that.